Hi, morning all. It's uh, 10 to 11 now. I'm sort of an hour and a half into my trip across to the northeast to go and uh, have a look at this 140-7. Uh, I've just stopped to make a couple of phone calls and uh, finish my coffee. And uh, yeah, that meeting the other day got us, a, got us a nice coffee cup, which actually it fits into the Mercedes cup holders rather well. So that was nice. There's also a couple more bits and uh, I think I might sort of do some sort of a, a giveaway or something, but I'm yet to think about how to do that yet, so stay tuned. Um, yesterday's video went down well, um, so I didn't get it uploaded till sort of half past 10, quarter to 11 last night, and when I had a quick look this morning, there was nearly a thousand views on that, so looks like you've all enjoyed the enjoyed a bit of tractoring. Like I say, <clears throat> I only do that sort of, um, sort of occasionally really, just on an evening or, on a weekend um but yeah no today i'm going back over the northeast to put well to have a look at this oil leak again on this 14 tonner i've got a new steel pipe i've got an o-ring i've got jubilee clips then i've got 60 liters of hydraulic oil as well and then down to county durham um to go and service 2t5 he doesn't want me till sort of three o'clock ish which is absolutely fine because by the time i get to my 14 tonner it'll be 20 past 11 um, I would imagine I'll be a couple hours there, so that'll be 20 past one. And then I, I guess it'll be about two hours down to the 225, so it'll be quarter past three, 20 past three, somewhere like that. So it's all kind of working out all right, really. Um, but yeah, a lot of traveling to do today. And uh, so far anyway, the weather's dry, but I have a feeling if I don't get wet with rain, I'll be wet with hydraulic oil by lunchtime. I'm not looking forward to it. Anyway, right, we'll jingle on down the road or across the road or, well, yeah, we're going to cross country, so we're kind of neither up nor down. Okay, I'll catch you when we get there. made it back to me yeah 14 tonner the machine's done what was it 88 hours and it's on 93 so it's been about five or six hours since i was last at it and yeah you can still see there that it's leaking oil in here so like i say i've got everything i've got the o-ring i've got a new pipe i've got uh new o-rings for on there and i've got a uh, jubilee clips as well so just covering all bases is really just because um, obviously the machine's two and a half hours away. It's an awful long way to come um, for something like this. So um, it'd be a real shame not to have everything just in case. So everything's ordered. It was ordered yesterday because obviously by the time I got to it on uh, Friday afternoon, um, the cut off for ordering next day part is four o'clock, I think. So, um, yeah, I ordered it yesterday morning and it turned up for sort of quarter to nine this morning, which is actually late. Normally it is between eight and eight thirty, but, uh, no harm, no foul. Ugh. So I've got extra oil and then I've got my filters there for later on this afternoon. Hopefully we'll get there and we won't be too long at this. I mean, on paper, it's, it's only changing the pipe in it, but. Yeah, right. I'll, uh, I think I'll get my waterproofs on, not because it's going to rain, but because uh, keep myself dry from oil. Right, I've got my blanking plate on in the um, in the tank, <clears throat> so now theoretically all that should run out is whatever's in the pump and in this great big bar pipe here. Um, I've got all my P-clips taken off it. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing next is taking this feed pipe off for the pilot pump, because that's taking its feed from down there. Um, if I can take that off and just temporarily put a bung in that, cap that off, and then try and move this pipe so it's pointing down out the bottom belly plate. Hopefully I can control the flow of oil into that drum um, and uh, sort of minimize the mess because 
this is our one sort of well, this is our part of the chassis this plate down here so I mean the oil's got potential to run all the way around under the engine and oh I just more than out else really I just don't want to make a huge mess especially on a brand new machine so um, yeah I'll put you on a time lapse because uh, this next hour or so is going to get pretty messy my hands will all be oily so time lapse is probably going to be the uh, answer I'll catch back up with you um, yeah I'll catch back up with you once we've made a mess is the uh, that's the pipe off um, so yeah that is the bottom of the that's the feed into the pump um, so I've mentioned before it looks like one pump you've got your front pump and your rear pump these two pumps are identical and they need to be adjusted and tread the same way otherwise if you've got different characteristics in one pump to the other pump it'll completely affect how the machine handles um, and things like that so it's, obviously it shares its uh, oil supply from the tank and uh, yeah this is the pipe that I've taken off so um, this here is the o-ring that I suspected of being slightly mashed when it was fitted but um, it's not actually don't think it's too bad and um, mate of mine Sean he sent us a message um, after he'd seen the video and it was him that recommended that I ordered the pipe um, he'd once had one that was pitted um, but that's nice and smooth so whether it's just not quite square when it's been welded into here perhaps and it's not quite sat you know it's not um, it's not square with the pump um, Oh, what? I'm not too sure. There's a little bit of an abrasion around there. Um, but uh, anyway, I think replace the whole lot, put it back on. I've had a look again under, under the pump where the face of the pump is. I've had my torch on it. I can't see anything wrong with it at all. Um, so I'll grab a ruler, steel ruler, and just make sure that it's flat all the way across to the best of my uh, abilities. Just make sure everything's bob on. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll replace all of this. At least it continues to leak. We haven't got a question mark over, oh, I maybe should have replaced this the first time I came back to it, so. Let me know what you do in the comments as well. Um, obviously, I've got everything here, so I might as well might as well replace the lot. But if you were if you were doing this job, um, what would you do? Put it down in the comments and let me know. I think I'm doing the right thing. Right, so I've taken well everything's back together now, and uh, I've taken the blanking plate out of the pump. Now, what we need to do is because uh, we've introduced so much air into that system um, because we've introduced so much air into that system and um, what we need to do is bleed the air out of the pump um, because the pump is relying on the oil to keep it lubricated keep it cool now if you to just take that blanking plate out of the out of the um, tank ah. You to just take that blanking plate out of the tank and um, you probably have an airlock the, the oil wouldn't sort of come any further than here so what you do and um, what i've done anyway this is the one that made the mess first is i left this pipe slack so all the oil's pushed up into the uh, pilot pump i'll probably take that one off and just uh, 
let the air push out all the oil and then same with this on this pump here you can see it's just starting to dribble now and um, so that pipe is loose and yeah you can see the air bubbling out yeah so i'm just going to let the air kind of get pushed out by the oil until i've got a good solid run of oil and i'll do the same on here just now So when I, um, when I set the machine up to work on it, I purposely kind of left it like that with the arm on the floor, but raised up so it wasn't, if, if anything should happen and the blanking plate doesn't stop all the oil coming out, at least there's a lot of oil sort of in all the rams. Um, so yeah, anyway, it worked all right, but that was just a precaution. Um, now I've caught as much oil as I can. There's a couple of drips and that that uh, couldn't be helped but put it I uh, caught it all into there and I've just poured it into this empty 20 litre drum and you can see I've lost exactly 20 litres I would say so I'll grab 20 litres put it back in the tank put the suction filter back in and uh, zip the tank bolts back up and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it stop it immediately and just come around and check everything and then I'll do the same again, start it and stop it. Um, just so I'm confident that all the air's bled out of the system. Okay. Right, that's it running. Um, pump doesn't sound abnormal or gurgly or sort of unusual. Um, I'm just going to let it run for a couple of minutes now. And then I'll stretch the arm right out and uh, double check that the hydraulic oil level is correct. Right, so that's everything back together. Um, I did notice actually when I started the machine up and tracked it towards the van, um, there was a check engine light. Um, so I've just put my laptop on it and looked at the code. Um, and it's saying that the DPF temperature is out of sync. Um, so I'm running it through a fast regen now and everything seems to be spot on. Um, DPF in temperature um, is that one there which is reading 619 degrees and the SCR temperature in is also 619 degrees so to me if that temperature sensor wasn't reading right it would read a different uh, temperature to that because you look at the diagram you've got the temperature here before the dpf and then the temperature after before the scr so that's those two temperatures there um, and they both look to me like the they both look to me like they're in range so hopefully this region will uh, will clear it but it's half past two now and um it's been going now for the last 20 minutes i'm just hoping it's gonna sort of finish in the next 10 minutes engine error code will disappear and uh, I can get on to my next job but to be fair the uh, engine's going to be uh, pumping all that oil around the around the machine at the moment obviously with the pumps running so we'll have a quick look in here see if there's anything coming out Nothing else, that's a good result. That uh, feed pipe's nice and dry, so yeah, we'll just gotta wait and see now. Could have done with being away down the road, never mind. Right, it's 10 to 3 now, and uh, it's finished doing its regen. The error code has disappeared. Um, hopefully, that's it now. I know with the old Dash 5s, um, the first sort of 100 hours. Um, it would sometimes want a force regen because it couldn't do a, an active one and then after it done its force regen um, it would do its active ones no bother after that so touch wood that's all it is um, pack all this laptop up now and uh, nip down the road to Durham God. it's going to be a long day the guy did say any time after 3 o'clock and uh, yeah it's definitely going to be after 3 o'clock right 
onwards. Right, it's uh, quarter to five. Last job of the day. 500 hour service on uh, this 225, so get everything opened up. Um, yeah, I'll get this filter changed. My nemesis, this filter head. It's always a one of them when you come to service these, it'll either, it'll either go just fine or it'll be a pain in the backside. And given that it's five o'clock and uh, got an hour and a half to drive home, it'll probably be a pain in the backside. One thing I always have, um, I always have a thought when I'm taking these balls off with these pliers about cracking and damaging one. I've got one of the old style ones and one of the new style ones in the van, and uh, as a just in case measure, but in the 14 years I've been servicing these diggers, touch wood, I've never cracked one yet. <sighs> Right, just drain the fuel out of here, take this tap right the way out, it comes out quicker. My uh, Starsman got us some more of these orange gloves, I think you got extra large and they're a bit, uh, they're a bit slack on my hand. I think I normally get large. Can't just remember now. There we go. See that blob of muck coming out of there, look. Oh. Quite a common thing with these forestry machines. You can get a bit of you can get a bit of fuel contamination. So when I get this filter off, I will, uh, I'll be having a look at this filter head. So, oh yeah. Can you see in there? That sludge. So, we'll give that a clean out. I'm going to grab some uh, cleaner. Oh no, I've got it with my rag, look. That's it. Marvellous. Oh yeah. I can see some muck in there. So, right, I'll, uh, I'll have to take this filter head off and give it a clean out. I've got my filter head uh, stripped down and cleaned out and uh, seems to be pumping up nice now so I'll give it a couple of pumps and then take my finger off there I don't know if you heard it go whoosh um, that's how I do it yeah so now I've got a bit of frothy fuel coming through I'll uh, I'll run that back in just not quite all the way and hold the rag round here to keep everything clean pump it through until I see diesel coming out that hasn't got air bubbles in. Right, while we're doing fuel filters, I'll get this one in here done. So, just slip that under there. These little five litre, uh, five litre containers are ideal just for slipping under the filters. It stops you making a mess. Uh, get that one undone. That out the way.
There we go. Engine oil filter. This one's a little bit messy. Let that run out. What I do do with these engine oil filters is um, when I put the new one on, I do use my filter grips just to give it a little bit more of a nip than I can get with my hands. I've found in the past um, when I've just run them up finger tight, well not finger tight, but with my hands, and I've come to service it the next time, um, there has been a little bit of oil leakage and the oil filter has got a lot of uh, dampness about it. So I do find that if I just give the, the, the engine oil filter a little bit of a nip up uh, with the filter grips, it stops that from happening. Get this run off. Now always, when I take this filter off, it falls forward rather than backwards. Let's see, there we go, that's all right. Let that run the worst of it off. Like I say, I always try and service machines and make as little mess as possible. Very easy as well to cross thread this filter. To make sure it goes on like that, you shouldn't have to, there shouldn't be any resistance when you're putting it on. Right, that's as tight as I can get it by hand and then I'll just, um, I'll just give it a little bit of a nip and no more, like that. Obviously I serviced it last time and it was no effort to take it off. I'm not concerned that I'm going to get that stuck on there. Um, just a little bit of a nip, I find it stops it leaking out of here. Right, last filter, just pilot filter down here. So I'll go and get a 24mm spanner. So I got this uh, ratchet spanner for this job. Um, because you can just get it in and hopefully there we go take that off give it a wipe down inside it's like doing a cookery program this isn't it right pop that off in there, see again, it's all grey. Put the new one on, nice and clean. Pull that out now. Finish it off with the spanner. I'll tell you what would be interesting. If I had a record of every single machine I've ever serviced, I wonder how many filters have changed since I've started doing this job. There's a customer of mine that's got uh, seven, well at the time it was seven 160 high tracks and they're all on a service plan so they get serviced every 500 hours. And between me and the driver, we worked it out at the time, uh, just that customer alone had changed over 750 filters just for that customer in the last, over the period of about two and a half, three years. So, it'd be quite interesting, wouldn't it? Right. That is all the filters changed. I'm gonna put about 27 litres of engine oil into the machine. And uh, yeah, I better take that engine oil drain pipe out first. So um, I'm away on holiday Thursday and Friday this week. Um, it's my 30th birthday. So I've been told to take some time off. Um, so what I might do, because I've wobbled on so much in this video, um, and we've covered a bit of ground today, to be fair. I might uh, edit this one up for a Wednesday video and then whatever happens tomorrow, I'll put in Friday's video, which, to be fair, you won't see until Saturday evening when I get back from my holidays. Um, so I think that'll work. That might work all right. It'll kind of 
split things up a bit and uh, then it's business as usual the following week full five days working so I think that's a good idea just I've just thought of that right now um, so yeah I don't need to like cut some of these chatty bits out you maybe enjoy it you maybe don't let us know in the comments if you prefer to see time lapses where I'm not talking nonsense for five minutes at a time so yeah there's something that's always overlooked this air pre-filter cleaner thing so and these 225s they don't have them on the 14s and the 20 tonners uh, 14s and the 160s put all that muck in there can you see I'll just give it a, I've got this old paintbrush, I normally use it when I'm <laughs> cleaning the inside of my van, getting among all the switches, but get in there and just get all that tipped out, so I'll not just do it there, because when I start it up, the radiators will suck it all in. It's amazing how much dust gets in here. Like I say, I serviced this one last time. A new 20 litre drum. And then I know where I'm at. And then after that, I know I've just got to kind of top it off. Um, yeah, they've changed. As stupid as it sounds, they've changed the shape of these oil drums. Um, so in the handle, it's hollow. And the air kind of, as you're pouring out, the air kind of, comes into this up here and by the great pourers now um, the old ones they used to sort of glug out for the first five or six litres and you had to watch that you didn't sort of glug it all over the rocker cover but these ones are much more predictable when you pour I'm pleased that rain's disappeared anyway. When I was coming through Newcastle, God, the heavens opened. It was that heavy, you could hardly see four or five white lines in front of you. And I thought, God, I've done well so far today not to get wet. I thought this is going to be a very quick service. <laughs> uh, so what I'm going to do after I've filled the engine oil up is... Uh, I'm going to check all the belts, check the condition of the belts and uh, just look for any signs of sort of bearing where quite often when you're looking around the um, around the belt area if there's a bearing away sort of you get like a brown dust on the back of the pulleys I'm just looking now I can't see anything um, and the tension tension of the belts is good I'll also check the coolant level because well that's running out. I'll show you. I remember servicing this a while ago and all of this was soaking wet with uh, coolant. You can still see the residue here. So I, I removed that Jubilee clip and I sort of moved it further down the pipe here because it was sort of right on the end and it just just didn't look quite right. I'll have a look now. If there's no coolant in it. Oh, it's full, look. Looks like I fixed that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a telltale sign. That sort of residue that's left behind. Quite often with a coolant leak near the fan, the fan will blow it all around the engine bay as it has done. Then it's... Uh, you know, with the engine being hot, you go to a coolant leak or a suspected coolant leak. With the engine being hot, the water almost instantly evaporates. So you end up with residue just splattered all around here. And it's it's really bad to judge where your coolant leak is. Right, that's finished uh, pouring in now. I'll put this other seven litres in and I'll uh, catch back up with you. So before I start it, I've just come round here to give that a couple more pumps for luck. 
hopefully she'll fire up straight away but um spotted that daddy long legs down there look i don't know what you call them elsewhere in the country i was always always daddy long legs and uh, do you know a weird fact that i know about daddy long legs well i don't know whether it's a fact or not you maybe tell us otherwise but they've got they're, they're a bit like a mosquito with a big long nose and apparently if their big long noses could penetrate human skin they'd be the most deadly insect to humans now whether there's any truth to that i don't know i've never really never really researched it just to find out but anyway go see if this machine starts now <laughs> i said earlier if you like the video and you want us to keep chatting away i can just see it now all the comments stop talking absolute rubbish get on with your job <laughs> hey, man. right let's see if this digger will start Well, look away, I'm going to put the password in. Okay, you can look again. Right. Turn that music off. I don't know what the rules are, really, with YouTube and music. So I'm not going to... I use the music that you hear in the videos. I use on the editing app that I use. Um, but I don't think you can get copyrighted on that. But if I use like chart music or something, I don't know whether I have to pay royalties or something, so I don't want to find out. Anyway, let's see if it'll start. There we go. I'll let that tick along and I'll show you. I'm just going to um, reset these service lights now. Go into the user menu. And then scroll to oil and filter information and reset all these. Right, that's all done. Um, yeah, you'll notice the cab's sort of reasonably clean and I'm not reasonably clean. So I always respect, you know, at the end of the day, someone's going to be sat in here for eight, nine, ten hours a day. And uh, yeah, I'm not just uh, clamouring with this kind of gear on. I would like to think whoever looks after my van services it has the same thoughts. Keep it nice and clean. Right, it is 29 minutes past six. I've got an hour and a half or so to get home. And uh, yeah, like I say, I'll call it a day today and this will be Wednesday's video. So thanks very much for watching. And don't forget, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And for more bits and pieces throughout the week, Go and have a look at Ali's Digger Diary on Instagram too, so.